this week's programme, we have the first of our Masterclass programmes. We spend time with Steve Lovett and ask him what's important in setting a course. Steve, on this stand, we've got a standard target and we've got a Batu target, which in sporting terms you'd shoot as a report pair with the standard first and then the Batu afterwards. Yeah. What have you put on with this particular target? How are you using the land and what are you doing with this particular stand? I'm just using the natural um, terrain fill. Um, as you can see behind me, the hill rolls away nicely. It's an open skyline, so it's going to be difficult to judge distance. Um, the line of the target will be affected optically by the roll of the hill and it's just a natural sporting stand for my liking really. With the pink going away target, you've obviously chosen a pink target there and why have you chosen a pink target? I've chosen a pink one or a coloured one because if, if we have a look round at the hedge we can see it's going to fall below the hedge line and there's a natural dip in the hedge to our right hand side and the shooter will be able to see it all the way through its flight. It's going to be dropping away slightly which they probably won't be able to see um, and that's the choice of target on there. I want something that will show up. And, and with that, what have you done with the trap? You, have you, is the target going from the shooter's perspective parallel or is it slightly dipping away? It's slightly quartering away and rolling into the bank, but you can't really see that unless you really stand behind the trap, to be fair. And then when we look at the batu, you've, again, you're using the terrain for this batu, but what have you done with it? The batu is wound up quite considerably, which... I'm pretty prone to do at times, um, but it's going to be climbing off the trap and it's going to be climbing up the contour, the natural contour of the hill behind us, heading towards the wood. Um, and it's going to be slightly higher than what the contour of the hill is. So if you're not careful, there'll be an optical illusion with a natural gradient of the hill. And with that again, is the target actually sort of straight on or is it slightly quartering away or quartering in? Generally, it'll be quartering away. Um, as it gets further to the wood, it'll be further away than what it is at the kill point, which is just past the stand where we stood. OK, so in, in terms of looking at how you're using everything here, you're obviously using a combination of the terrain, you're using angles slightly, yep. little little bit of speed by the sound of it on the second one, yep. and a little bit of distance on the second one too. Yeah, yeah, everything, everything there, speed, angles, distance, um, yeah, everything really. And when we, when we look at that and we, you know, when we look at the trap in detail, yeah. what springs have you got on both of the traps? I've got a normal mid-range spring on the Promatic Falcon there for the pink one, which is, um, that'll get 70 or 80 metres of a clay easily. But on the big Batu Super Sporter, I've got a big Super Sporter spring on it, double spring. And why would you put a bigger spring on? Um, because I want a little bit of distance on it. I want it to follow the whole of that hill behind us right up to the wood. I don't want it to fall in short. Um, we can change between, I, I generally use three types. I use a real floppy one as a trainer spring, the mid-range one or the double spring one. And when, when we're looking at that as well, you know, we're looking at the use of the traps. You know, traps in terms of technology have changed tremendously. So yes, you're using the terrain, but you can actually move the trap in terms of its own dynamics to change the angle, can't you? You can now, we'll, we'll, we'll demonstrate when we go out there. I, like this, take this pink one for instance, I can, I can tip that to follow all around the contour of that bank if we want it to, or vice versa, tip away. So yeah, the dynamics, is, they're all three dimensional and it's just brilliant for us. And that's what really catches people out as well though, isn't it? Every time, yeah, every time. They can't, they, there's times they say, oh guys, that beat me, what's it doing? And unless you're still behind the trap, you can't see what it's doing. Now, I know you want to go and turn on the traps because we're actually going to have a proper look at these now and then we're going to break down the trap in detail, aren't we? We are. The first target we look at with Steve is the going away target, which is actually positioned about 20 yards to your left. Right here, we've got a new Promatic Falcon trap. Um, we've got the interchangeable spring here. There is the three springs that I was talking about. That's the real big double spring. That's not suitable for these kind of traps. That's more geared towards the bigger traps. So on this trap, I tend to use the medium range, which is already on there, or we go to a real floppy trainer spring if we need to. Everything's all interchangeable on the springs. Two minutes, you've changed the spring. It's job done. Uh, <clears throat> the trap itself, dead easy, dead simple to set up. You've got tilt, both ways tilting on this little adjustment screw here to tilt it so you can bend the clay, turn the clay whatever way you want to and then trajectory of the trap is down on that nut there. It'll basically go up to 70 degrees for like a spring in teal. 
and it'll go dead flat and about five degrees below dead flat if you want it to. And that's pretty much all there is, Phil. So we need to determine how far we want this clay to travel across the hill, adjust the spring accordingly, and job done, really. The second target that Steve's got on, Steve has got a Batu target, and it will be crossing in front of us. Steve, so just, we're on a Batu trap here. Yep. Just show us the difference between the, diff the couple of clays you've got here, between the A bird and the B bird. They're both the same diameter, 110 mil standard. That's the A bird, which was the pink standard off the a falcon trap this is a batu as you can see a hell of a lot thinner for the camera there um, and but the beauty of the batu clay it can be thrown either way up depending on how quick i want it to show its full face to the shooter that way up the dish way up it'll come off and it'll roll and then you've got the full face pretty quick to shoot at the other the other way that way it will come off and the beauty with these, with these traps again, I can tip the trap over and I can get it to cool gradually and it will stay in its arc a lot quicker, a lot longer that way, that way up. This particular bird fill, I want it to come off, I want it to leave the throwing arm at the casting plate of this trap and I want it pretty much to follow the contour of this bank we're looking at. I want it to reach the top end of the wood, so it's got a big spring on it, we can, we can pretty much guarantee I'll get it to there but I want it to roll nicely so at the sweet spot for the shooter, it's there to be hit. Okay. And what are you doing with the springs on this particular trap? This particular trap, this time, it's a big double spring on it, the strongest that Promatic do. Uh, as you can see from the threads down here, there's still three inches of tension left on it. If, if it falls short, I can tweak it a bit to get the distance on it. The way that Steve has set these targets, certainly shows you what can be done with the chromatic traps. In our other masterclass series, we'll be talking to Steve and other course setters to see how they set certain courses and equally how they use certain targets. <laughs> <laughs>